Hello and welcome to another video here at AV Forums. This time we're talking about tone mapping and what exactly is tone mapping. Well, essentially tone mapping is a solution to a problem. The problem is that modern HDR content uses very large color volumes. Now by color volume, I mean the combination of the color gamut that's used and also the dynamic range, the difference between black and peak white. And when these are combined together, they create the color volume. Now, some content is currently being created using 100% of DCI P3 color space and also a peak brightness of 4,000 nits. That's a very large color volume. Um, other content is created using 1,000 nits, but even so, that's still quite a big color volume as well. Now, the problem is that the majority of TVs struggle to even deliver 1,000 nits of peak brightness, and none of them can deliver 4,000 nits. So you've got content that's got a very large color volume and TVs that have a much smaller color volume, and you somehow have to transpose that big color volume into the smaller color volume of the TV. And that's where tone mapping comes in. It applies mathematical algorithms to take the content and then transpose it to match the capabilities of the display itself. Ideally, whilst also retaining the content creator's original intentions. Now, the thing about tone mapping is, whilst it's very clever, there's no standards currently as to how it's actually applied. So each manufacturer takes their own approach. But the general idea is to take the color volume and transpose it to the TV's native color volume. It's a bit like saying you've got a 10 litre container full of water and you've got to somehow put that into a five litre container for the water. Now, obviously with water, you can just throw away uh, five liters of water and put five liters into the five liter container. With TVs, you can't do that. You can't just throw away content. You have to work out how to apply that content in a way that still looks enjoyable, still gives you a good XDR performance, but um, obviously it takes into account the native capabilities of the TV itself. And that's basically what tone mapping is, a way of transposing one larger color volume down to a smaller color volume. Um, how it's done will apply from manufacturer to manufacturer, and there are also things you can do to mitigate the tone mapping. For example, if the TV itself can deliver up to 1,000 nits of peak brightness and 100% of DCI-P3, and that's how the content was created, then there's no tone mapping required at all. Also, there are things like dynamic metadata. So at the moment, HDR10, for example, uses static metadata. It has two numbers, the black level and the peak brightness for the entire film. When you're tone mapping that, it can be tricky. If you're tone mapping content that's got zero black and 4,000 nits of peak brightness, and the TV can only do um, 0.05 black and maybe a maybe a 600 nits of peak brightness, that's a lot of tone mapping that's required there, and you've got to do it for the entire film. If you use the NAB metadata, you can change that, that metadata from scene to scene, and therefore help less capable TVs actually tone map correctly, and thus retain more of the content creator's original intentions. So it's a very complicated subject, but it's basically a solution to a very simple problem, the fact that the content has a larger color volume than the TV itself, and that's where tone mapping comes in. Hopefully you found this video useful, and if you have, then please like and subscribe. And don't forget, you can find more news, reviews, articles, and videos like this at avforums.com, Europe's largest community for home entertainment. Thanks for watching.